And we'll welcome back to the stage Shane Jensen. Uh, so I, I recognize I even checked in. You're not getting a break. And then I get you for the last push of the day. So, so the only thing I'm going to say about not having a break and get to stretch is this presentation, I, I think the morning one, has, I got a lot of great feedback. It's very funny. This one is very kind of quick, very relevant, and I think it's actually a perfect presentation to end the day for where you are. We'll have a little bit of fun doing that. And so at the heart of it, I was asked, Shane, what is a poll question? A lot of you did it up there. And there it is, the four big ones. I'm going to give a hint away. I call it the four horsemen of distractions. And I'm not surprised that cell phones, and obviously you can see the other one, peers and coworkers. So what I want to do is just play with that. And the last piece is, again, I do a lot of public speaking, but this group today, I think it is so relevant that what I'm going to show you and what you're responsible for doing is so, again, I think a lot of what you're going to see, you're going to be like, I know this, but really what I want to do, again, kind of like the generations piece, is it's kind of out there, but I just want to pull it to a head and show you really where it's at. So let's jump in and see if we can get through this and kind of keep the energy going. This presentation is called The Age of Distraction. And if you're wondering what I mean by that, you've already saw the poll. But if we think about it, we are so connected, truly. And again, if we reflect upon where we were a couple years ago, where we are today, the 21st century truly is a connected society. More so than any other world generation, any other aspect in parts of the world before, it's all connected. I know some of you have friends that tell you when they go traveling or go to the most obscure places, almost every time they can find the equivalent of an internet cafe. I know that when we travel and we go somewhere to other places, one of our biggest stresses or concerns is, how much is my cell phone plan going to cost? Because we need to stay connected. It just is what it is. And don't get me wrong, I think it's amazing. Think about what we're doing today. What we could not have done even four to five years ago. However, what that means is there's a price. It is distraction. Every single minute, because we love to be connected, notice what I just said there. We love to be connected. Nobody forces us to be connected. Because we love to be connected, we are continually bombarded by a tremendous amount of information hammering us 24-7. And some of you in this room, or all of you in this room, love it. It's our fix. It's our drug. It's a high. It's important. And we rationalize it, don't we? Well, I need to look at my phone. I need my phone. I need to go on the internet. I have to have an internet connection. Because of that, we are connected. It's like a, 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 a Quilex cable to the back of our brain. And it's consistently always coming in. And the price we have to pay is this simply is this. There is one singular objective. Think about it. When you think about the poll you did, social media, your peers, your cell phone, and the internet, really what it's doing is saying, stop what you're doing, give me your attention. Now, if it's relevant to work, kind of makes sense, doesn't it? If you're throwing out some data, you need some information, you need updated something, it makes sense. But let's kind of pour a bit of a bucket of water on this. The reality is we check, connect a lot. And there has to be a price because your most precious commodity, and I know this, is time. It is. And we're stunned, aren't we? By the end of the day, sometimes we're like, that wasn't a very productive day. And I'm like, did you ever wonder, when you reflect upon whether it was a productive day or unproductive day, why it was unproductive? Did you ever wonder if it was your fault or their fault? And what's fascinating is when they start tracking this, is the choices we make around being distracted are our own personal choices. And what is happening, and this is what I love that I get to speak to this group, is I know you probably are seeing it more than me. The impact, the impact of being distracted. 
That is 24-7 connected. Look at this slide. I'm going to show you three slides that I collected in 10 days or less in the spirit of this presentation, just to show you how relevant this distraction piece is coming to a head. This first one is how it's happening across all our provinces legally. We know this, don't we? They started off with the feel good. Please don't check your phone when you're driving. Please stay focused, 10 and 2. It didn't work. So they ramped it up a bit. They ramped it up a bit. Now, if I think about the safety industry, they are now pulling car accidents. I'm sure some of you know this. They are now pulling cell phone records. And they are tracing at the time of the accident with the last text. And people are denying that they're on their phones during the accident. And those lawyers or those police pull the cell phone record, and they're like, dude, you were in a vehicle for 15 minutes. The last three minutes, we know for a fact you were driving. You sent a text at such and such time, 30 seconds before impact. Because of that, Ontario is the first one that's going to take a crack of it. But you know what's fascinating? It's still not working. It's not. Look at this one. This is Darwinism at its best. This just happened the other day. I had already written this, written this PowerPoint deck. I already developed this presentation. I'm like, I have to put this in here. Two distracted driving infractions within eight minutes. September 22nd, 2017. Buddy gets a ticket. And then eight minutes later, he gets busted by a different police officer. Didn't hit anybody, didn't kill anybody. Was the message learned? I don't know. But distracted driving, distracted whatever you want to call it, it is so applicable. And with utmost respect, and I'm going to have a bit of fun with this, I don't want to get too serious. How many of you get into a car and your phone is in your reach? Don't put your hand up. How many of you go to work and your phone is beside you? Just think about it. We don't even think twice about it. And again, I'm not so much here to judge. What I want to do is just let you know that it's not working. And that we are losing, potentially, from one end of the spectrum, a necessary loss of life, right across to a huge drop in potential productivity. This is in your home. This date, look at the date on this one. I pulled this one September 28, two days ago. I was like, oh my goodness, I got to put this in this PowerPoint slide. If you were not distracted this morning during my presentation, I said, who do you think let cell phones into schools when they first came prevalent? The teachers or the parents? The parents. It's not working. So this school is going to take a crack at it. I barely had time to research. I'm going to actually reach out to these people and, do, and get some more information. But this is a perfect example of we're just like, what do we do about this? And this is just kids in school, where technically they have, they're being controlled. We, as adults, have a tremendous amount of freedom to make choices. So let's just accept. Just accept it. 24-7 connected. Your polling this morning and today is connected to the World Wide Web. The Wi-Fi that on your phone, I bet 80% of you, one of the first things you do when you walk into any building is, what's the Wi-Fi password? So this presentation, to wrap it all up, just a couple of things. One. I just want to talk a bit about recognizing that most of us, and there's my caveat, I'll own that. I'm not saying every single one of you, but most of us are very conditioned to impulsively checking our phone or going online during working hours or, in quotations, inappropriate moments.
Some would call this an addiction. And I say that with levity, humor. But just think about how many of you have unfortunately, like myself, forgot your phone one day. How that made you feel. Or you misplaced it. Or, ready? How many of you left the toilet and your phone was back in the washroom? How many of you take your phone where just about everywhere you go? Think about that feeling when your phone does not work or you are no longer connected. And let me tell you about that. That is an example of a very deep human conditioning now. Your brain is hardwired. Again, just be aware of that. Okay? So how bad is it? Just going to talk a bit about that. What is the impact? Which, in my humble opinion, I think many of you in this room could speak to it more than I could. The science, it won't be boring, but I think we have to understand why if we're going to create change. And there has to be some ownership. And then obviously at the end, what can we do? And I'll tell you right now my caveat. If you want to. Note that. So, let's begin. Some of you are probably like, Shane, pff, not a problem. Yeah. Everybody take your hands and put them above your head. Let's have some fun. Okay? Put your hands on the table. Okay? Some of you have seen me do this keynote. Uh, you might have seen this before. When I say go, you're going to do something for me. Are we ready? When I say go, you're going to grab your cell phone and hold it above your head. Are we ready? One, two, three, go. Look around the room. Just out of curiosity, do you need your cell phones right now? Did you know? I heard, yep. <laughs> yeah, Saturday at 2 o'clock, for sure. Here's something other fascinating. By the way, I would be with you. I am not different. But let me tell you something. Really? In three seconds, 95% of this room had a cell phone in your hand. It was like quick draw McGraw. It was just like boom. Think about what I just showed you. In three seconds, a room of, I don't know how many people in here, two, three hundred? Just went like, bang. I bet you have muscles that have grown to hold your phone properly. You have, don't you? There is people in this room, you could look at me right now and have your phone under the table and write a dissertation, or text, or check your scores. How many of you get up and go to the bathroom and bring your phone with you? Just have fun with this. But I just want to say, if you're like, I don't have a problem, it's not an issue, I'm just like, what happened there? Now, the first piece of this presentation I said is, we need to at least acknowledge that just maybe there's a problem. And if there is a problem, why don't we change? But that's the catch, isn't it? The price is being paid slowly, and the government, your workplace, families are starting to ramp up the consequences. Which to me, I'm not always a firm believer in the big stick. So what's fascinating to me, and you know it, most of the distractions that occur in the workplace, and unfortunately in work safe accidents, is because of a choice of the individual. No company, no leader, no boss, no peer, no friend said, you have to check your phone right now. Nobody tells us to do that. Do you understand that? Like, really think about that. Now you're like, God, Shane, you were depressing for the last presentation of the day. But my point is, here is the good news in this piece. If we recognize that for the most part we are distracted because of our own conditioning, addiction, joy, then that means we are a large part of the solution. 
And you know what drives me up the wall in this world? Is that when I have a problem, but I can't fix it myself. I have no issue if I have to go hire somebody, get somebody to help me, but what I love more than anything is if I'm screwing something up, that I can fix it myself. And that is potentially the solution of this whole presentation. It's I just need you to own that. And I truly believe that there's hope. So why don't we see how good you really are? Tons of research around productivity in 45 minute bursts. So here's what we're gonna do. Everybody pull out their cell phone. Anybody ever played the cell phone stack game at lunchtime? Everybody ever heard of that? Some people putting their hands up. So there's a really legendary game out there. You're gonna love it, we're not gonna do it like that, we're gonna do a version. So when my friends and I go for a beer at dinner, hang out after work, at lunch, business, doesn't matter, everybody puts their cell phones on the table down. The first person that picks up their cell phone during lunch or our meeting or hanging out picks up the bill. Isn't that neat? Yeah, I know, you're like chuckling, kinda not half chuckling. You mean I gotta go through lunch without checking my phone, Shane? Everybody take your phone, put it in the center of the table and stack it. Let's do it. What's that? I didn't say go. Is that nervous laughter or laughter of joy? Okay. Anybody sweating? Anybody sweating? Over there, I got somebody. Yeah. You will survive. So the, your life, whatever hand you use, it'll start to twitch. We've done, no, I'm just kidding. Okay. If you focus on not picking up your phone for the next, how much time do I got? What, 20, 30 minutes here? I have proved to you that it is possible to work for 30 minutes without being distracted. Last but not least, the final rule. If you have to go to the washroom, you're not allowed to bring your phone. Okay? Just note that. So the phones are our stack. Let's see if you can do it as I begin this part, next part of this presentation. Okay, are we really that distracted? Well, considering everything I've talked about, it's kind of obvious. But again, with humor, I need you to take ownership of it. Because truly, this is us, isn't it? No, I don't, I don't have a problem. What, sorry, Shane, what was that? Two seconds, I gotta check my phone. We are the frogs in the pot. And it just keeps getting hotter. And we're like, it's not an issue. I'm fine, I can multitask. I can do this. No way, I'm just as productive. I need to be connected. I'm like, really? How many of you ever pulled up to an intersection before and looked what everybody else is doing at the intersection? Just, again, I am not here to uh, judge us. But the first part of this presentation is for us to recognize that just maybe there is a bit of an issue. And the problem is, we don't really notice it. I mean, we kind of think about it, but because we enjoy it so much, it's kind of the worst combination. Extreme pleasure, dopamine hits, enjoyment, versus putting that away. So what I have done with humor is I call it the four horsemen of distraction. These are the big four that impact productivity and safety. And I'm guessing none of this is a surprise. Let's look at the first one, cell phones, which interesting in that poll was one of the big ones. 100%. Cell phones alone, okay? Just look at these stats. Just look at that. I don't want to distract you from reading. And here is a great one, I love it. And what's great is your data, when you did this poll, supports this. Our cell phones are a ruthless horseman of distraction. 
But we know this, don't we? We know this. And you know what's fascinating? Is we don't know it. Or we deny it. 10% of respondents with smartphones said it's decreasing their productivity while at work. But 66% said they use their smartphones several times a day while working. So even though we know it, and watch this stat. This one is just like the kicker of denial. It's very rare when you apply for a job and the job description says you need to have a cell phone beside you all the time. You need to be connected to the internet. But people are like, no, it's not a problem. The next one, social media. Question. Anybody ever heard of um, Facebook? Anybody? Who here is on Facebook? Stand up. Be honest. Who's here on Facebook? Just stand up. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> stay, stay standing. Stay standing. Don't be ashamed. My goodness. Keep that. Uh, anybody check YouTube? Follow any YouTube people? Stand up. Anybody on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat? Just keep standing. It's okay. Okay. I could keep going on, stay standing for one more second. This picture of these young kids, those are not the ones that are just on social media. Are we clear? Grandparents love it because they connect with their kids. We love it because we can connect with their kids. We, it goes on and on. Okay, you can sit down. Again, the fun, the humor, but the seriousness of what I did is 80% of this room stood up. Okay? So let's just acknowledge it's there. The reality is, everyone, regardless of your age, chances are from your generation is on social media. It is not just a kid thing. And you know what's fascinating? Is we love it. It is a phenomenal way because we are a social based society. We are creatures that need to interact. We do. We love it from our sports groups, our sports teams, from our church groups, from our hobbies. It doesn't matter. All of it is being collected online. And there are tons of apps and different ways of connecting. We love it. But never forget this, and we do. It is a business. Billions and billions of dollars. So at the end of the day, all they really care about is obviously if you're happy, but all they care about is making sure that the latest and greatest distraction device they can come up with is hitting you 24-7. Because it's ruthless competition. But us on the other side, we're like, this is great. I can connect. I can stay connected. I can do this. I can do that. And I'm like, don't ever forget. And we are only in the early days of this. So how much time do people spend on social media? Again, we had a large part of this room stand up. Just some little fun things. YouTube, 40 minutes. Now, you might think YouTube is not social media, but that's how powerful YouTube has become now, is people are following, interacting, and doing comments, and learning and going back and forth. Okay? There is Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter. And remember everybody in this room from my morning presentation, which is absolutely great that you get to bookend it. The times they are a changing. And more and more of the people we'll be working with around safety and awareness and creating change and leading or holding them accountable, this is their world. Including, if I'm correct, about 85% of you in this room. So really, what the heck does that mean, Shane? Over a lifetime, we will average, look at this, five years, four months on social media. Are you kidding me? Imagine how much of that time takes place during working hours. Think about that. Have you ever been to a park and watched parents with their cell phones and their kids? Have you ever been anywhere and watched kids and watched parents? And I know some of you have judged it negatively, or you've been with them doing it. 
I'm not here to judge it. I'm just saying it is so powerful that if we sometimes have a choice between connecting with our children or our peers, we are going to be distracted. It is what it is. And by the way, this is just social media. And everybody in this room, we look at the pool, you're like, Shane, this isn't even a big issue. The bigger one is cell phones in my peers. And I'm like, my goodness, five years on just one of them. The internet. Why is it such a powerful distraction? You ever thought about that? With humor again, you're like, oh, I don't really want to because I spend a lot of time on it. And I'm like, that's it right there, isn't it? It's not even so much about pleasure anymore. Think about how much of how we daily get through days in a positive way from our banking, our financing, to bills, to connecting, to work, is going through the internet. How many of you are canceling cables and using the internet? We know this. We use the internet outside of work. That means, hang on a second, we're at work, but it's not work related. Nobody confess now. News sites, we love to check the web for news. Personal emails, there is work email and there's personal email. Okay? Sports, shopping, huge. And if you're like, huh? I'm like, you notice how many bricks and mortar are being shut down? Sears, just a perfect example. You bought stock in Amazon? Well, you wouldn't be here if you had bought stock in Amazon. The whole world is shopping online. And if you're like, I don't, I'm like, mm, you're not part of the whole world. You're one of the smaller print, and I think it's great, but we know this. As somebody said to me, we're killing a million trees every day for the amount of cardboard boxes that get delivered to my house because of my kids. Online banking. You can now take a picture of your check and deposit it. Think about that. We don't go down to the bank anymore. Weather. <laughs> Love this. Okay. Entertainment, need I say more? Current buzz, need I say more? Researching holidays and travel. I got five minutes before that next client. I'm just gonna check a couple things. I'm really excited. And I love this, I'm bored. Really, what you're saying is I want a hit. Little dopamine hit. And last but not least, our peers, and again, when you think about the poll, this one was off the charts, and I'm not surprised. Are they not annoying as hell at times? Think about it. A bunch of you just put your heads down on the table, depressed. And because we as humans avoid conflict like the plague, we have a hard time, or the flip side is we're like, oh, thank God I can talk to somebody, I don't want to do my work. And you know what's hilarious is more and more reasons why your peers distract or, or come and bump into you or bug you is because they just read something on the internet. And then guess what you go do? Have you seen that latest YouTube clip? Have you seen that picture that circulated? And on we go. Have you heard about, unfortunately, this latest disaster? Look at that. And here is another kicker. I didn't even put it in there because it's so depressing. How many of you know that the moment you're distracted from a peer, or you do anything else about the other three horsemen, that it's not like you just go like, uh-huh. It actually takes a while to refocus your brain and get back up and figure out where you were. And if you were doing something, lots of nodding heads here, if you were doing something really complicated, you're like, okay, what spreadsheet was, what was that? Who was I going to email? What was that safety record I was supposed to send? And it actually takes you a couple minutes to reorientate your brain. So you're being, it's like double the whammy. So, I call them the four horsemen of distraction. This is our bane of our existence, but it's also a tremendous amount of pleasure. But there is an impact, isn't there? There is. And I know again that you know it better than me. I could fill this whole slide. Workplace accidents. Drop in productivity. Upset customers, 
quality of work suffers, of course. I just talked about that. Lower morale, because I know some of you in this room, statistically it's boomers, get really pissed off when you look over and see Buddy on his phone or on Facebook when he or she should be working. Or sitting in the truck in the crew cab and they haven't got out yet because they got to check something. And you're just like, are you serious, dude? We're behind schedule. Negative impact. Hey, leaders in the room. This is frustrating, isn't it? Keeps you up at night, some of you. What are they doing? Why are they on their phones? Is it work or is it not work related? How do I know? How do I check? Miss deadlines. Say no more. And I love this one. Loss of revenue, which we really don't correlate. Or how about this last one, as somebody reminded me of? You get fired. That is a coming. And again, I know that this room could tell me many more. And I know, and here's kind of, you can start to read between the tea leaves of what I'm saying here. I know you know this. I know you know this. And I also know that you know that your phone is stacked in front of you. And I also know that 98% of you, it took you three seconds to grab your phone. And I'm guessing with humor that some of you sometimes, if it's a really long red light, that you might just check your phone briefly. Maybe. So the question is why? This isn't rocket science. Again, it's like, Shane, you're not really telling me anything new. I mean, it's fascinating. You're pulling it all together. But you know what's something fascinating? Even though we rationalize that we can still kick ass and be distracted, it does not support the research. Our brains are not designed. The research is absolutely overwhelming. I could, again, spend a whole other sub-presentation. So just look at some of this. Neuroscientist Daniel Levin, he's done a ton of research around this. It doesn't work. Our brains are not designed. You cannot introduce this thing called the World Wide Web and everything that's come after it, after we've evolved as a species where we were designed to focus on one thing. Hunt the animal. Gather the wood. Chop the tree down. Think about it. We would never get here if we couldn't focus on these very important tasks. And all of a sudden, boom. I love this. You think you can, but you're leaving money on the table. There's a reason we sleep. They're not really crystal clear, but we know what a stressful, mentally hard work, and it's a pride. If you just work super hard, you're mentally and physically exhausted. So let's never forget that this is a massive muscle. And there's only a finite amount of energy in a day. And I know that a lot of you are working in complicated, especially around safety and what you have to do. Or some of your jobs, some of you are working in very high risk environments. Come on. You need 100% attention. And when it comes to teaching and education, for some of you in this room that are doing that, and going out into the field, and I talked a bit about this morning, and how your medium has to shift to video, to more interactiveness, to more critical analysis, is because look at this. If you want someone to actually learn and take it in, and some of you have learned this the hard way, and we know this. When you really got to learn something, you got to like zone in. But 40 hours a week, five days a week, working, yeah, I'm going to check a couple of things. And last but not least, or one of the ones here, this myth of multitasking is a myth. You can get good at it, but you're never kicking ass as much as if you singularly just focused on one task. So the science supports it. So why do we still do it? Why are we so easily distracted? Again, the brain, the brain is why. I love this, and I know some of you have heard about this 
over the last six months to a couple years. It, there is two big reasons. The first reason why we have to check or why we are distracted more than we need to be is it truly is a dopamine hit. We are so wanting that hit. We are connected. We like it. We're bored. Whatever it is, I don't, you can call it whatever you want. I don't really care. Understand that every time you do it, your brain fires a positive response and it reinforces the neural pathways. Just so you know, your brain, as I was thinking, our great speaker before me talked about the plasticity. It is so true. We reinforce behaviors in our brain because it's efficient. It's ruthless. And the other one is because of marshmallows. Anybody ever heard of the legendary marshmallow test? What was debunked about the marshmallow test was my critic in the back, was the constructs weren't correct. Is that kids that had a really supportive environment with lots of love and affection, they still kicked ass. And some of you are like, Shane, what are you talking about the marshmallow test? Really, we check our phones because we don't want to wait till our coffee break. We can't. If I said to you, don't check your phones, you'll be more productive, potentially get a greater bonus, cause less accidents in the workplace, guess what? Chances are, my apologies for saying this, a lot of you are still going to check your phones. If I said, don't check your phone for 45 minutes, just wait, and you will be way more productive, chances are, you'd still check your phone. They put kids in a room and said, here's one marshmallow, Jackie. If you don't eat that, you can eat that marshmallow, Jackie. But if you can just wait 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I'll give you a whole plate of them. Poor Jackie, you should see the videos. They're just so stressed. Ethically, you could probably get into it. My point is, we love instant gratification, don't we? We avoid pain and we seek pleasure. It's just biological. And because it's so easy, 98% of you had your cell phone in your hand in three seconds. No wonder this is potentially an epidemic. Now, I know some of us think we're innocent. I know some of us think it's not that big of a deal. But I think, as I'll be getting lots of requests for this presentation, you will be the best group ever where I think you know the impact of this that we know that we are not innocent and that we have to do something about it because the consequences are continuing to build. Because the reality is, the majority of times, think about this, in the workplace and unfortunately outside of the workplace, if there is a choice, what do you think is going to happen? Instant, immediate gratification is going to win or consequences? What are you going to do? Immediate gratification. Now again, you can argue, you can push back, everyone. But there's a reason why I showed you those three slides at the start. It's not working. We do not have the ability. For whatever reason, I'm not here to just judge that. But just understand right now, distraction is a huge issue for us. And the research is supporting it, and the culture shifts are happening. They just keep ramping up the money. So I did this presentation two weeks ago to a group of baby boomer, a leadership group. And one of them said to me, Sheen, when drinking and driving became a problem, nobody listened. People chose to drink and get in their vehicle. So we ramped up, this is like 35 years ago, so we ramped up the fines. Guess what people kept doing? Drinking and driving. So eventually, she and we had to move to make it a criminal charge because that's the only way, and people still do it. And this person, this group was with, because I was doing all these uh, focus groups around this, is they're like, we believe this is eventually where they're going to go, is that they're just going to keep ramping up the consequences till we at least put our bloody phones down while we're in a vehicle. And this is like in harsh conditions. Can you imagine what happens in the workplace where the consequences aren't really as bad? So let's focus on that. 
What are the solutions to these four, four, these four horsemen? Well, here's the good news or the bad news. It's a bit late for the magic bullet. And if some of you are thinking in your head, well, why don't we just hit the internet connection at work? Why don't we just say zero tolerance? How many of you know that doesn't work? That you piss off a lot of people? Now, I'm not here to argue around your cell phone policy uses in the workplace or on the job site. We're all trying to figure it out. But understand we have gone pretty far down the rabbit hole and it's not going to be an easy thing to shift. Because I love this picture on the right here. I am sure that parts of my presentation has been a surprise, but I'm also pretty confident that large parts of my presentation, you're like, yeah, I kind of knew that. It makes sense. And I'm sure you're all aware of the impact of distractions in the workplace and in of inappropriate situations. And I can stand here and rage and rant and show you a million consequences. But the reality is, whether you choose to drink from the water, that is, pull back, is up to you. And at the heart of it is, knowing what to do and actually doing it are two very different things. And we're really good at putting it together and think we're doing just fine. But understand that knowing and doing, and this happens in the safety world, is huge. And time management is a myth in this day and age. Most time management courses are designed for structured, how do you focus on one thing? We can't. So looking at the research, the work that we're doing, and a lot of you are going to do this. We simply call it the solution is what we're thinking it's going to be and is, is proactive attention management. It's not very sexy. But if you think about it, it's not time management. It's where we focus our attention for short blocks of productive time. And we have to be proactive. And this is what I mean by proactive. Simply put, you are going to have to make physical changes in your workplace and in the car if you really want to pull yourself free from the grip of the four horsemen. Isn't that fascinating what I just said? I'm not going to I'm going to show you three steps. But really what I'm going to say to you in an essence if you want to like check out is you can't trust yourself. That's okay. Admit it. But you can make some physical changes that'll have an immediate impact. But the first thing you have to do is accept that. And that's what the whole point of this last two thirds of this presentation was about. That we don't have the willpower, for the most part. So, three simple steps. The first one is classic, and again, I know some of you use this in your workplace. How do you get people to buy into your safety standards? How do you get people to listen to you? How do you get people to wear the proper equipment? Pay attention, do all the great things that I know that many of you people do. The first thing you have to do is admit there's a problem or an opportunity. In this context, it's a problem. There is no point in even going any further on my three steps if, with humor I say this, if you don't think it's a big deal. And I want to respect that. And let me be straight up. Then step two and three, it's not applicable, don't worry about it. But if you can say, hmm, Shane raises a good point. Hmm. You know, I kind of check my phone at inappropriate moments. Hmm. I have gotten in a bit of trouble. Hmm. I think I could kick ass a bit more. Then just acknowledge this. Just say, wow, he's right. Or not he. Look at the research. Look at the data. Look at my phone stacked in front of me. Sink it. No one in doing. And again, see it as positive. Fastest way to change is positive. We know that. OK, here it comes. Here is the essence. If you want to take away the essence, here it comes. Literally, you need to take back control of your environment. You do. Let's just go to basic, basic human nature 101. If it isn't there, it's not a problem. Think about it. It's easy. Modify your environment to help resist those dastardly four horsemen. 
Because let me say to every one of you in this room, you are actually modifying your environment to be distracted. You are. You have multiple tablets. You have multiple, I don't need to get into this again. But with humor, just chuckle and say, you know what, he's right. I make lots of micro choices or big choices every day to modify my environment so I can be in touch with the four horsemen. Now maybe your peers, you actually want to punt. But just understand that you are doing this. And here's something fascinating in that. Did you know your cell phone has an off button? Did anybody ever check that? You ever get on a plane and notice the airplane mode? That is going the way of, anyway. I'm being a smart ass, but that's an extremely effective solution. Now hang on, I'll make it even easier. Remove all app email. These pop-up blue blinking lights, email notification, they are killing you. Apps are designed to get your attention. I showed you a slide 10, 15 minutes ago. It's only going to get more crazier. They want you to pay attention to them and not your work. Just note that. So do not buy into all these little things. If possible, if possible, turn the internet off for 30 to 45 minutes at a time. You just right click that little box down below. It's really easy. Your peers, have you ever said, do not disturb? I have yet, and we do a ton of organizational work with clients and leaders and companies, and I have yet to have a leader say to me, I get really pissed off when my employees come up to me and say, don't disturb me for 45 minutes so I can kick ass. Think about it. You're telling me that your boss or your peers, if you went and said to them, hey guys, I, my productivity is suffering. I'm going to get a little funny sign, and I'm going to say, well, my sign's up, don't bug me, and in 45 minutes I'm going to get up and stretch, and I'm going to come and chat with you. But you need to take control and go tell your peers that. And an easy one. I'm going to confess. I'm going to confess. I used to check my phone in my car. And I would rationalize it every which way of Sunday, but I still did it. Then I almost <clears throat> kind of hit the tail of the car. So I woke up the next morning, because I have kids, and I thought to myself, what the hell am I doing? So every day when I get in a vehicle, I simply take my phone and I put it in the trunk, and then I get in the front seat of my car. And the reason I didn't go cold to like, from like hero to zero or zero to hero is that my car Bluetooth syncs, so I can still take phone calls. And we can argue about if that's a distraction or not. Don't, don't rip the bandaid off me yet, OK? I'm slowly working through this. But I just need to tell you this, that physically, my phone, every time I get in my car, I put it in the trunk. It still connects to my Bluetooth, where I can take calls. And then I get in the front seat, because I do not have the willpower. And it's highly effective. You could take that example and push it into any aspect of work or in any appropriate circumstance. We need to reward ourselves. This zero tolerance is not going to work, especially with these new generations coming up. So there's lots of great research. I know you guys probably see this so well, that people are really productive for 45 minutes, and then mentally and physically, we need to get up and move. So what I think is, why don't we tie this into being productive and distractions? Work for 45 minutes. Do everything you need to do in step two to control your environment. Then crank it out for 45 minutes. Then stand up and do whatever you want to do for five to 10 minutes. Stretch, walk. Go I don't, I don't really care. Think of it as positive reinforcement, a bonus, an endorphin hit. 10 marshmallows. Just do 45 minutes. And you will actually retrain your brain. Then take it off airplane mode and see if the world's come to an end. Because for whatever reason, we seem to need to check that every two minutes.
So admit there's a problem. Or for some of you in this room, an opportunity. For me, it's a problem. Take back control of your immediate environment. And in essence, what I am saying there, and it's the most important part of this message, we make micro choices every single day throughout the day to modify our environment so that we can be distracted easier. And we upgrade and buy the latest technology and, the fa and it goes on and on and on for one singular purpose for that whole distracted side of it and then maybe work. Just understand that we do that. Step three, I don't believe in zero tolerance in this. There's too much good with it. But we need to find a balance. So my balance is research supports the human being can work really hard for 45 minutes, and then they need a mental, physical break, and then they'll actually kick ass even more. Why don't we tie that into distractions? OK, how do we do? Anybody check their phones? Confession, anybody? Look around the room. Put your hand up. OK, can we have a Marshall? Everybody grab your phone and applause, please. <laughs> Feel good now? Relax. Feels got the phone. It's there. It's in front of me. The whole point of that exercise, as I wrap up my last slide here, is simply this. You can do it. You can put away that massive distraction device and for 40, what was that, 30 minutes, 40 minutes? Completely stay focused. So, in essence, in the most part, the four horsemen, the reason they piss us off and impact, well, they don't piss us off, they create, make us happy, is because of the choices we make. Just note that. Take ownership of that. The good news, though, if we are a large part of the problem, we can be a large part of the solution. And I love that stuff. We love that. And the whole point of the cell phone stack is if we are committed, and I did do proactive attention management with you, we can do it. Work in 30 to 40 minute blocks. However, I know you know this. You might not have known too much about my proactive attention management piece. But I know you know this. So good luck. Thank you. <laughs>